Hi, you're listening to Boggy Talk, Faith Conversations in the Mud, a resource of Church on Bayshore. Boggy Talk is recorded on Boggy Bayou in Niceville, Florida, and is hosted by Justin Wyatt and James Ross, pastors at Church on Bayshore. We typically want every matter of faith and life to have crystal clear answers, but it isn't always that easy. This podcast digs in to help Christians think with a kingdom mentality about topics that sometimes get muddy and bog us down. So let's dive in. Hey, and welcome to Boggy Talk. Thanks for joining us for week five of our series, Inside the Church, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And I'm here without a special guest, but still with a special person. (laughs) James Ross. It feels a little empty. It does. Uh, And it's so funny because after we recorded Steve's talk uh, and he was in the sinking stool, you don't realize it in here, but going back and like watching the video, I realized he looks so short in the video. Oh man. And it's really funny. Yeah. But you know, it it fits. So you doing all right? I'm doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just really daylight savings time finally adjusted to it Thank you, you know Jesus. and wish again we would stay this way please write your and, local um, congress person senator let, let's get it let's get it they keep teasing us so yeah, come on let's do it yeah the family's all good we're spring break we're, we're on spring break right now as we speak yes it is spring break and well, I guess as as they hear, as me. they hear, not this, as we speak. Everyone is traveling to their destinations, listening to Boggy Talk as a family right yes, now. Yes, yeah, or they're there already listening. They're there, sitting on the, waking on the beach. up in the morning. Yeah, they're beach. on their morning run with their earbuds in and uh, just listening to us. So, hey, how's your run going? <laughs> We hope well. We hope well. Oh, it's going well. We hope, we hope the soothing sounds of our voices. <laughs> That's right. Are you are special? Matching. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. You are. Anyway, so how oh, are you, Justin Wyatt? I man, it's you're this, on spring break too, aren't you? On, so, yes, we're and this year, thankfully, everyone in our house has the same spring break, unlike okay. last year, which was oh, yeah, terrible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this year, everybody has the same spring break, and so we are breaking, and it's uh, and it's just nice. So. Um, yeah. Well, this week we are talking about, yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. There, well, that's, a, that's that. There's a cut transition. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about our fifth discipleship essential, the good, the bagly, the, the bagly, the, bag. the good, the bagly, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, worship, grow, serve, give, and reach. reach. If, uh, so there's so many songs I could, I could think of. Each one, it reach, reach one. run, then some, or carry your candle. Wow. Man, there's so many songs from. Shine, what's the hill? Shine your light and let the whole, the whole world, world see. We live in. What song was that? That's uh, Mighty to Save. Oh, wow. Shine okay. your light Man, that was big that for a was while. That was epic I haven't heard that while. in a long time. Man, for a while, like in the early and mid 2000s, you actually probably mid 2000s, late 2000s, you didn't go to anything that 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 song they didn't play that song how come you know like the 80s music comes back 90s music come back but like worship music like contemporary worship music doesn't tend to like come back Uh, because Kayla just keeps playing it Oh, okay. <laughs> no, okay. I think it's because it hadn't been, yeah. hasn't been long enough. Like you know, oh, yeah. I think but that, some of them have. Like, like I'm surprised women aren't dressing like Darlene Check now. Like <laughs> again, that's, again. It, you know, it's coming back. I'm sure okay, it will. Okay. Yeah, some songs are coming back. Like, in fact, I heard the stand. They're like, I'll stand with arms high. I heard that recently. I like somewhere. that song. It's a good one. Yeah. It's a responsive song. Uh, Bab just don't like it because it says they'll stand with arms high, and they're like, we don't do that because <laughs> 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 the oh, Bible. Goodness. Says it, but we don't. Um, anyway, um, now we just like to write worship songs and like I'm your favorite special that's, yeah. one. Oh man, that's okay, this, sorry. Yeah. Hashtag uh, elevation worship. But you know, if they have more than eleven words, yeah, that's seven right. Seven words, seven, seven no. verses, <laughs> eleven right. times, whatever. So people are like, "What is that?" And I'm like, "I'm so glad you don't know that." So uh, anyway, speak. Reach, moving on, reach. reaching on. We are reaching yes. on uh, uh, to our topic today uh, about pressing uh, onward. That's right. The upward way. Man, there's so many songs okay, we can sorry. sing. Uh, but <laughs> I just got lost in my thought. Yeah. It's not hard to do. But um, talking about reaching. So we're talking about why we share our faith. Uh, and well, we do that because one, that's like God's plan for the gospel to go forward. If we don't tell, then people don't hear. The how do you know that, that, Justin? I know that from the Bible because okay. how can someone believe unless they here. So, Romans 10, he just dropped some Romans 10 on y'all. Um, also, you know, we're going to debunk the the St. Francis of Assisi quote that says, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words because it's always necessary to use words to share the gospel. Um, but that really- was, Yeah, that was St. Francis 
a sissy that said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? That was a good one. They don't even know that he said right. that, by the way. Yeah, it's just uh, uh, Hobby Lobby just says that he says it because <laughs> it's on all their art. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, so, my goodness. Um, so, <laughs> Michael Gunger just wrote a song about that. <laughs> Sorry. Man, we're on a roll okay, with the songs yeah. today. So, um, I don't think his songs are making a comeback. Uh, yeah, no, Hopefully probably not. He so, will come back to Jesus. Uh, his, let's, let's talk. <laughs> before we, we dive into where we are right now in the year 2022, people sharing their faith. It may be helpful to kind of talk about like in recent years in yeah. church, kind of the, the methods that people have used to share their faith right. and the emphasis on evangelism. So yeah. um, my personal favorite is hold a sword to someone's neck and <laughs> say, if you become a Christ follower, I won't <laughs> chop your head yeah, off. So if we go back to the crusades, <laughs> people point to that. It was very like, effective in terms uh, of conversion. Right. But was it, was it authentic? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. It's really hard to <laughs> judge someone's not. heart in I that mean, moment. You can, make, right? you can get people to say a lot of things <laughs> and pray a lot of prayers with a sword to their throat. Yeah. So is it a really effective evangelism? Yeah, I don't think so. So, so let's go all the way back to Romans 10 and, and uh, the early church and and what's happening. And I mean, the Bible not only commands, I mean, you know, the great commission mm-hmm. is Jesus saying, hey, you know, authority has been given to me uh, right. and therefore go and make disciples of yeah. all nations. Yes. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teach them to reserve all that I've commanded you and I will be with you to the I end of the I will age. be with you. That's right. And then in Acts, you know, yeah, it tells Acts us. Yeah, Acts 1.8 right there. Yep. He says, you will go, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and all like, Samaria. Yes, Samaria. Yeah, Samaria. I was like, right. And you know, every time like you're just like, yeah, you're yeah. saying a verse and you're like, am I saying this right? Um, but and, it's because you know, you're so used to changing doctrine. To, I just like to, to make it up make, as I go. For the song. <laughs> for the song. Oh, yeah. that, that word doesn't rhyme. Let's, yeah. But this heretical word does. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, and <laughs> um, then, and then the early church, we see. Yeah. They're like, hey, what's going on here? And people are like, what's going on here? And Peter's yeah. like, here's what's going on. You crucified Jesus. Yes. He's your way boldness, to salvation. Boldness. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, we, we've been reading through the book of Acts, you know, in our reading plan and in our life group, we've been talking about that. And I just, you know, growing up, which is crazy. Like, I don't know that I really read the book of Acts in mm. its entirety mm. until after college, mm. uh, preparing to go on the mission field, which one is not a great thing having grown up in the church. Advised. Yeah, advised, exactly. Yeah. But I, you know, in training, and so it's like you're reading this for the first time, and I mean, not all of it for the first time, but the whole narrative, I should say. Mm-hmm. Part of and, it was that they were like, "Oh, you want to be a worship leader?" They don't have to know the Bible. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to know the Bible. <laughs> What? Okay. Um, but it's like, you know, just seeing how like, this is the birth of the church as it starts to spread. And it's beautiful. Uh, and we're, as we know, as we're reading the, re- the reading plan, we're kind of reading, we're jumping from Acts to some of the Paul's letters as they're happening uh, chronologically. You're there, And one of the things you see is this incredible boldness yeah. uh, throughout Acts as people just are in step with the Spirit, speaking uh the truth, like you see Peter, you see Stephen, you see uh, Paul, you see many others uh, who are sharing their faith boldly. Right. And, you know, that's what God's called us to do. Yeah. I, I love in Acts chapter four when uh, they're told to stop, you know, and Peter and John are like, hey, look, whatever you want to decide about what to do with us, that's between you and God, but we cannot help mm-hmm. but speak of what we have seen and heard. Right. And so this boldness is coming from an overflow of encountering Christ. Right. And so I think that that's like the place to start is like, there's these commissions of scripture and encouragement of scripture to advance the gospel, to spread the gospel message so that people be saved, Romans 10. And they're not going to be without somebody doing that because that is God's agent for it. But like, it's not like they were like, we have to do this. <laughs> right. Like, they, they just do. They yeah. did. It was, it was, it overflowed. And I, and I think that, you know, over the course of history, um, while there have been political movements uh, that mask themselves as of ev- evangelism, uh, the church has said, hey, what, uh, how do we get the gospel to people, you know, and how mm-hmm. do we contextualize the gospel? And so, um, you know, that's the missionary movements we've seen mm-hmm. uh, from from all regions, from America as well. And then, um, you know, I, I think... I think if you really look back over history of America specifically, you know, these mass uh, crusades, you know, yeah. were effective in getting the gospel out to right. a large audience mm-hmm. and people didn't have a lot to do. Yeah. 
So they're like, hey, you Let's know, a bunch, you're going there, I'm going. Yeah, you know? exactly. They might feed us too, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> It'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, I think going back to Acts really quickly, like one of the things it says is like people receiving the gospel or hearing the gospel, hearing them, you know, it says that they recognize these were ordinary people like who had just been, who had been with Jesus. So it wasn't like they, they had the, professional training that they had taken a lot. They had just been with Jesus and then they were compelled to share from the overflow. Yeah. So if we talk about like the, you know, crusades of the fifties and sixties, you know, and a lot of people talk about Billy Graham and his crusades, which, you know, God did use those uh, in profound ways. Yeah. And many, many people, yeah. um, you know, we don't know how many are authentic and, you know, only God knows those things, but so those are, those were effective. And so then you move forward and then you kind of have, um, a lot of church-based evangelism programs, like, right, you know, right. which, you know, a lot of, many people in our church remember uh, yeah. some of the Billy Graham crusades and a lot of people in our church in the context remember a lot of the church-based uh, evangelism programs uh, where you would um, have a, re- you'd have a revival at your church and there'd be like this night, there'd be a, um, you know, family night this night. And then like one night would be like, bring, they wouldn't say this that night, but like the leading up to like, we want you to bring your lost friend, like bring your, bring a lost friend night. Like was right, kind of the yeah. entire, like bring people. So it was kind of a, a mini uh, crusade of sorts. And then you have programs like uh, the FAITH program, F-A-I-T-H, like there was an acronym and it was like a very organized method of going to share the gospel that a lot of Baptist churches, it was a Lifeway, well, whatever it was called back then. It was a program. The um, Sunday school the board. The Sunday school board, yeah. Like I, I then that was like, I remember as a child, our church doing that and my dad participated in that. So as a non-Christian and growing up in a non-Christian home, I remember people coming to us our house and like going over and I didn't realize what it was, but they were like, clearly like, uh-huh. we're like recalling, you know, yeah. something like they had memorized and, and it felt to me, you know, so we're, but kind of like what Jehovah's witnesses do, yeah, uh-huh. you know, um, like that they just had this. Like, I wonder if they, they were like, Hey, it's working do. for Jehovah's witness. Let's come up with a Christian yeah. way to do this. No, I, th- I think that when, when, when the, church began to move secular. I mean, sorry, the country began to become more secularized by and large, really in the 1900s. And, you know, that was the massive uh, immigration of of Catholics, massive immigration of um, some of Europe, which was less uh, godly by that point. Mm-hmm. Um, then, then they became aware that, hey, we've got to, and we're a couple of generations now removed right. from the Puritan Protestant movement founding America. Hey, we've got to figure out methods of sharing the gospel because mm-hmm. they don't know like there was just some common understandings of right. God and the yeah, Bible. Yeah. And now There's we realize people ground. don't know that. So how do we kind of get them there? And so you have evangelism explosion, mm-hmm. you have faith, uh, you have Romans road, you have other kind of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, th- I think the heart behind it was just to, to get there quickly in conversation with someone who maybe didn't operate from the same, uh, presuppositions that the typical person would have operated from historically. Yeah. And so now we're, we are where we are now yeah, in 2022. Right. And so we've kind of gone through all these things. And I think uh, as we talk about sharing our faith, you know, being in a, in a multi-generational church, when you talk about everyone should share their faith uh, and people are like, yeah, like I, most believers, I mean, I would say all believers know at least an intellectual ascent, I should share my faith. Right. Uh, when we talk about that in a room full of people of multi generations, uh, you have a lot of different ideas of what that should look like. Going right. back to what people mm-hmm. have experienced, so some people, if we say, "Hey, we should do outreach as a church," some people immediately say, "Yeah, we should host an event. We should have a crusade. We should have a revival. We should have a meeting." And then some people say, "No, we need to go visiting. We need to go back and do visitation." And some people would say, "No, we need to go out and serve and do some do do things." Uh, and so it really was, it's kind of a reflection of, of generations in our church and kind of our bent to that. And then you have some people who are like, no, just go share the gospel with just go, you know, and lifestyle, uh, yeah, lifestyle yeah. evangelism, like who are you around? And so, uh, right. So how are we doing this? You know, and I'm going to ask you that because you're the lead pastor. So you're mm-hmm. called, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we're all called as believers and as pastors, but you're the, you're the one pushing us in this direction as the lead shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I heard, um, that uh, John MacArthur made a distinction. Not that I believe with everything he says, uh, made it make a distinction. So you got to be a familiar person with Boggy Talk to understand why I said that. But <laughs> he talked about how they have beliefs at the church and then they have what they teach. And his point was that not everybody believes mm. what they teach, uh, and but they're going to teach these things. And so I think like, 
If you ask, how are we doing this as a church? I would say there's what we're saying we should be doing. And then there's what our church is actually doing. Mm -hmm. And what we are saying, you know, a, a little over a year ago, we, we did this emphasis on, um, wait, no, this year. It lives, was lives year. Was, that was last year. Was it last year? Yeah, it was the beginning of 2021. Yeah, you're right. Beginning yeah. of 2021. So sorry. They all, it all, they all it go seriously together. all runs yeah. together. Live Scent, where we really talked about, hey, living in the community and then being an ambassador for Christ as you develop relationships in your workplace, wherever you go. Um, and so what I what I would say is that means we want everybody to embrace the idea of intentionality with proximity. So I'm around people regularly, but I'm also intentional about getting conversation mm -hmm. to where they are and ultimately preaching the gospel. How we are doing it is I think most people think if I can get people to come to church with me and listen to James and listen to the music and their kids are like feel loved and accepted and feel like there's value here. Ultimately that will point them to their need for Christ. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I would say, that's kind of what it looks yeah. like right now. Yeah, I agree. I think that is kind of a, <clears throat> it's a lot less personally to like, for me, if I'm, if I'm someone who's trying to reach someone, there's a lot less at stake to invite them to church than for me to like push a little forward in the conversation of like, hey, where are you standing? So inviting what's the church funny, is good. What's funny is for me, that's not necessarily true. Right. Because like, if they come to church and then they don't like it, they're probably <laughs> saying they didn't like me. <laughs> right. Like my friend, my son has a friend on his basketball team who said, yeah, we, we visited your church, but w my parents didn't like the pastor. And my son was like, well, that's my dad, <laughs> which I've met them now and they're cool, you know, but, but it's, probably different style. Than yeah. Probably to. different. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, for the average person, right. Right. Including you. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. they're like, well, that's not what I expected. Right, and I'm right. like, well, so I, yeah, I, I, I work with them. That's my job. I disappoint people all the time. Yeah. So, um, um, but I think it's like that. So that is a piece of it. Okay. Yeah, that right. is a piece of it. And I think that really goes back to a mentality of the church that for, for several gen for several decades, I think it has been because that was, what was emphasized as, as churches, not just this church, but most churches like bring him to church, bring him to church, bring him to church. And what we've seen really in all across the board, a lot of ways is this more like, no, you are the church. You know, we right, are the church. Right. We are sent out, go live sent, um, and share the gospel. And people, you know, so could the church somewhat come bring a lost friend to church, them being here for a few weeks, a few months, hearing the gospel taught? Uh, could that be how God saves someone? Absolutely. But what's probably going to be more effective is you walking alongside them and sharing the gospel with them demonstrating what the gospel looks like as a family and taking the risk in those conversations and saying, hey, just, just tell me, like, where are you in this? Uh, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. And walking along, like, not just relying on the the, the big church right. to well, I do it. So, so this is inside the church, right? Mm -hmm. Good and the bad, the ugly. So here, here we go in that there has been this shift of a lot of churches and from their leaders to say, hey, our our Sunday morning gathering mm. is about the non-believer. Yeah. I, and it's a it's about evangelism. And and with respect, they're dead wrong. Mm -hmm. Because that's not what the Bible in any way says. Right. Like you know what they're trying to do. And so you appreciate that. Yeah, their desire thought. to see people come to know Christ, awesome. But what I think they've done is taking the easy way out. Mm -hmm. And what it eventually does is results in um, a lack of maturity amongst mm -hmm. a congregation. In the New Testament, the worship gathering was about worship of Christ mm -hmm. and a focus on Christ. And the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, the Bible tells us, are there for the equipping of the, the saints, saints for yeah. the work of ministry. Mm -hmm. So the worship gathering should be focused on believers being strengthened. Now, however, non-believers showed up. Yep. And it's so, so there's thing, Paul gives mm -hmm. instructions gives on why you don't speak in tongues, why you don't do certain things that distract the non-believer right. and create confusion for the non-believer. Mm -hmm. But, but it says that non-believers might see the power of God, the kingdom of God and fall on their face. Right. In all. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately like 
not, we should be mindful that non-believers are going to be yep. there and even address them right. and say things to them. But ultimately, the purpose of this gathering is to fuel the believers to go out and share the gospel. Mm-hmm, absolutely. I think one of the things we try to keep in mind as we plan our worship services and, and not to keep us on worship, but uh, is is that we are, is for the believer with the non-believer in mind. So everything as much as possible should be intelligible to the non-believer. Right, yeah, there absolutely. shouldn't be this like, I mean, there's things that are not going to be intelligible right. because the Holy Spirit hasn't like worked in their heart in that way to illuminate. But, you know, it should be like we... Even because preaching is evangelistic, it's evangelistic to the to the Christian too, right? right? Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. you know, like we should be sharing the gospel. We should be answering questions that people might be thinking or asking, and we do that. Uh, you know, and we continue to evaluate how we're doing that. Uh, so yes, we want to keep the non-believer in mind, but even then, like that's not the purpose. And so how do we then yeah. as a church focus on reaching non-believers? But so so before we fully dive into that, the the other end of that that I would present is what Christian maturity is is often also misunderstood. And so the focus of a church's gathering becomes more informational and mm. becomes really yeah. focused on knowledge and and yeah. Bible study rather than worship. Right. And the central aspect of worship is the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so the gospel should be emphasized on Sunday morning. And, and and I like, you know, Jason Dukes, when he was here leading us in live sent, he said, maybe the reason our culture doesn't know why they need the gospel is because we haven't Hmm. shown them why we need the gospel. Yep. And so like, if a non-believer comes and gathers with us on Sunday, what they should be walking away with is that all of us, like these people who've been going to church forever, all of us need Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> and Ooh. so not only do we need Him for eternity, we then need Him for na- for, for now. Today, Righteousness moment, yeah. is our position and it's our direction. So mm-hmm. the reason these people are living the way they're living is because what Christ did for us. And so I think that the the challenge then becomes if a non believer walks into a, a church gathering. And sees all these people who there is a disconnect between what's being proclaimed and mm-hmm. what is being lived. Um, but the ideal is that a non-believer doesn't see that. If they if they have a connection point with the church outside, then they come and that's just, oh, I get more. Why? Or if they develop connection points because they showed up at church, mm-hmm. they see consistency, you know, and, and, and so 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 I'd say that's kind of that's kind of the tension there is that like saying, okay, the worship gathering isn't for the non-believer doesn't mean the worship gathering is not focused on the gospel. Right. <laughs> yeah, because the gospel is what changes us right. and what leads, what's what leads us and compels us, you know? It's what compels us to share. It's what right. compels us to reach. It's what compels us to serve. So as we're doing that, I think this is where, I think this is probably the disconnect for most Christians uh, is like, so how do we do that? Because yeah. if we're not, it's not just bring them to church, which that is a piece of it. So yes, invite people to church. Yeah. But how do we do that? Um, and I was thinking through like, how do you, how do you share the gospel with people? Well, first you have to know people. Right. <laughs> you know, right. like first you have to know people. Uh, and then you have to be intentional in knowing those people. Uh, you have to spend time with people. Um, and I think where we are culturally, like we are not that you could never just walk up to a stranger's door, knock on it and share the gospel, mm-hmm. but we're really kind of culturally past the point where that's going to be received well. Right. You know, whereas, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just, pe- not that people are going to be rude. I mean, some people will be, but. Yeah. It's just like, people are like, why are you doing this? So right. so it, it takes knowing people and it takes being intentional with people. And then it takes like taking the step in the conversation, whether it's, right. hey, you know, hey, I, a couple of us are going to study the Bible. You want to come to the Bible with us? Or, hey, I've noticed this. And how do you, can we just kind of ask you this question? Um, what, where are you? What do you think about this? You know, specific matter of whatever you're talking about. But I think in, of faith. Um, I think that's where most people... Uh, myself included at times, it's like, how do you, like, where do we cross that? Uh, not cross the line, but how do we do that in a way that we're like confident uh, that uh, that we can do it and not fearful? And I think the answer is like, what we see in Acts is that we're empowered by the spirit to yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think one of the things we talked about in Acts in our life group is like, like underline, like when people are sharing the gospel, when it says, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit, mm -hmm. led by the Spirit, uh, the, the Holy Spirit said, do you know, like, it is like, if we're walking in step, like there's opportunities around us all the time. Right. But if we're like attuned to the Spirit, if we're just going about our day as most of us do, we've got things to do and places to be and we're tired and all this stuff, like we're not even aware of the needs around us, but like God provides those opportunities if we are looking for them and we're willing to take the step. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the thesis uh, of what I've said during this whole series is that this is all more simpler, much more simple than we tend to make it. Mm. Um, I, I think the place that we must start and, and as we do this, we'll also talk about why we go wrong, like is examining our heart. Um, and first and foremost, like, do I love Jesus? Like, mm -hmm. And if I love Jesus, am I spending time with Jesus? And right. and and if somebody is more influential than us and stronger than us, then if we spend time with them, we're going to become more like them more than they're going to become like us. And God in no way is going to have his character shaped by us, <laughs> and but he is going to shape right. us. And so if we're spending time with him, we will begin to grow in heart mm -hmm. for him. Then secondly... So then if that's true, then I begin to see myself as an ambassador for Christ. Second Corinthians five says that's you right. know, we are who I am. For Christ. I'm not a resident of the United States of America. Primarily I'm a citizen mm -hmm. of the kingdom of God. What? And so I become somebody who lives for the kingdom of God. And, and I begin to see everyone mm -hmm. and my relationship with everyone through the lens of the primary reason I'm in their life is to point them to Christ. Right. And 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 I mean this sad I think the average even Christian is looking at people more from a lens of what can I get from them mm -hmm. than what does Christ want for them. Yeah. In marriage, mm -hmm. in children, yep, in family, in coworkers. Mm -hmm. And so like legitimately it can't be that. And 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 I and I fight the flesh, so like I I feel that, but ultimately like what I want is that for them. And I believe if that is true, then that will ultimately lead to opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and as you pointed out, God says he's with us in this. Yes. So I think it's interesting that we often pray like, God be with me and getting the job I want. He yeah. never says in the Bible, he's <laughs> right. going to do that. You know, we say, God be with me and my kids getting, you know, this college scholarship mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. Like all these things. Mm -hmm. But God clearly says over and over that he's with us in the ministry of reconciliation, the advancement mm -hmm. of the gospel. So like if our heart is there and therefore our hands and feet are following that, then isn't he going to help us? Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. And I think that's what we forget. Like in sharing our faith, we sometimes, a lot of times, think it's like up to us to save people. God, God saves people. Right. He uses his people to right. do that. And, you know, like <clears throat> if you look through the disciples, the early church, the book of Acts, like they got a lot of things wrong too. Like they wasn't, they were, they weren't perfect people, but they, they followed the Holy Spirit, you know, and they followed the Lord and he was with them and he guided them and he gave them words to speak. I mean, the scripture says that you will have the words to speak, uh, you know, and I think like if we're just saying, Lord, you do this, then we, we are open to the wisdom of God and we have the mind of Christ and we say, Lord, like, this is how I want to share. Like, I want to share. And so God, I'm going to let you speak through me. And God will. I mean, you, you've been in those situations I have. And I think a lot of people listening have been in the situations where you're like, I don't even remember what I said. Like, but God, I, God did something, you know, and people come back and like, you said this one time. I'm like, I literally don't remember saying that. And it's not mm -hmm. just because I forget things. Like, I don't. But somehow in the translation, the Holy Spirit used this to work in them. And I think mm -hmm. God does that. Uh, he is the one who, and so it's not up to us. We are simply called to be faithful and obedient and let God work through us. And I think we- I, You told me you were going to give me 250 bucks so I could buy some Jordan 1s. Oh, I did? Yeah, you I don't do remember not that? remember that. That, that is not inspired. Word. That is, God does not <laughs> like that. So, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so I'm probably oversimplifying, but- you know, when you look at how evangelism has went poorly. Yeah, in the how church, have we gotten this wrong? Yeah. I think that it's because we have a low view of worship. Hmm. You know, I think that when when 
when a pastor begins to emphasize evangelism, either out of the right heart, mixed in there is a desire for his church to grow because most pastors are driven and growth is success. And not only does your congregation, but other congregations applaud you when your church is growing. And then you have a bunch of people who have a low view of worship. And so they then say, okay, I do know I'm supposed to do this. And then they began to get trained in how to share the gospel. But they don't really understand, like, God isn't asking for people who just make a profession of faith. Mm -hmm. He's asking for people who adore him. Yeah. And I think it leads to false conversion. Mm-hmm. Leads to a, us. It's, it leads to us baptizing a lot of people who spring up with joy, but then the worries of this world choke it out. Right. Parable of the seed, seed yeah. mm-hmm. parable of the sower, and I think it leads to people who are ineffective in evangelism because they're just memorizing something and it's not really coming from the heart. Now, again, I'm not saying in there there aren't people who are genuine and using it as a tool, right? Um, but I think by and large, I remember people coming to our door, and it was like, man, they were. It just felt so mechanical. Mm-hmm. And it felt like they were trying to sell us something. I mean, yeah. and, and I don't even think there were people who were like slick. That was their intent. Yeah. But yeah. it kept, comes across that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I just think there's something about being someone who loves Jesus and loves people that becomes contagious. And I would just say, if you really do believe, if you love Jesus and love people, then you know the gospel is the power of God for salvation to those who believe. Mm-hmm. So I just need to figure out how am I going to clearly communicate what the gospel is Mm -hmm. to somebody. And I think our testimony and just like literally being like, Hey, God is holy. We are not. um, And we don't deserve to be in his presence. And Christ was uh, the punishment. I mean, Christ took on the consequences of our sins so we could be made holy and pure. Mm -hmm. And it's a gift given to you, but you have to accept that gift um, and then you respond to that gift as a Christian. You know, the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the three circles of evangelism is God's design, brokenness, and God's pursuit of God's design as a Christian when we repent and believe. I mean, I really think it's really pretty simple. Yeah, and you just, you share that. And you, you know, I think we're afraid that that's, we're going to, aff- I think sometimes we're afraid like we're going to offend people with that. Well, yeah, probably. That's kind of like this offensive message. But at the same time, it's like, Oh well, like the the gospel's offensive, but we if we love people, we'll share it with them, you know? Yeah. Um and, and we look for the opportunities. I think you're absolutely right. It's like we 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 think sometimes it has to be this like dramatic situation or it ha- it's gonna and, and maybe, maybe your conversation with some with someone will be uh it'll they have tons of questions. You're gonna have to yeah. sit down and like, go for it. Like yeah. that takes priority over, you know, right. over, like do it. But I yeah. think um, you know, just l- a few weeks ago, um I had the opportunity with a neighbor uh, who from our, we wait together, drop off kids at the bus stop and we were walking back towards our houses and we were just talking about, it was right as uh, things in Russia and Ukraine were happening. And this is someone that uh, I doubt she listens to this, so I bet she talks a lot. And sometimes I'm like, I got to go. But, you know, I, we've been praying uh, and just like, God, continue to give us opportunities. And she was like, so can I ask you a question? Like, how are you going to talk to your kids about this? And I was like, oh, ooh, man. So I was like, well, here's how. Did I'm you gonna... say, ooh, wait, <laughs> I said, oh, let me tell you, I'm going to show you. I started yelling at her and I just, I just was like, you know, we're going to talk about it. We're going to explain things. We're gonna, But we also... I just had the opportunity to say, and we're going to explain it from like this pro- this perspective of like the world is broken because we are sinful people, and mm. and and Psalm then two. and yeah, and just like talk through the God, and then I just basically like this is how we're going to tell our kids, and basically was through that able to share the gospel with her, uh, and it's like okay, I and my flesh actually really wanted to just to hurry back home because I was mm. like I'm going to get in a conversation it's going to take too long and I just, mm. and it's cold and but it was like I knew. That I was supposed you to. You really just, don't like cold. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I was like, I just want to go home. Yeah. Uh, move on with the day. But it's like, yeah. and that's, you know, one example. And I think we all have those opportunities that if we slow down, and granted, I, as I share that one opportunity, there's probably way more that I miss because I am like, I got to move on and I got to do this. And where it's like, we can just take the opportunities that God puts right in front of us, slow down right. and just say, you know, Lord, 
help me not just to see the opportunities, but then to walk across the threshold yeah. and just, you know, people are going to think what they're going to think and they probably already think you're weird. So go yeah. ahead. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, sometimes, so again, I think, I think we need to get to the gospel and then are there objections like, well, I don't believe in God. Well, blah, 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 you know, or well, you know, so-and-so, you know, the Bible says this about homosexuality or whatever it may be. Why are there all these religions? Like, okay, well, that we're let's talk more about that. Mm -hmm. And it might not be one time conversation mm -hmm. and you might not know the answer and you might, yeah. you know, need to say, well, I'll research that more, but then you come back yeah, like, and you follow up, like yeah. you keep digging into that. And I would say, don't be afraid mm -hmm. to like dig into that and seek truth. Cause Jesus is the truth. Like, right. you know, one of the things I think is so funny is like sometimes Christians are, and I, when our children are young, like we want to be sure who's influencing them, but like our kids are going to go to school and what are they going to hear? And it's like, I mean this with kindness and respect, but like if your college student like went off to college and learned about something else and all of a sudden isn't a Christian, they were looking for a reason to not be a Christian. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just being real, like yeah. seeking the truth mm -hmm. brings you to Jesus. Yeah. So like, and me, you know, and I've had moments, it's been a long time, but moments where I'm like, do I really believe this? Yeah. And so let me like dig into this mm -hmm. more and look at what other religions say yeah. and look at what history says. And I'm like, yeah. oh, actually it's leading me to the reliability of Christianity. Yeah, that's that's a know? great point. Cause you know, I, I think back specifically to college and I had some of those wrestling with faith, like for, you know, going to the college I went to like was confronted with a lot of things I had never thought about. Uh, and ultimately it is what you said, like wrestling through those because I believe Jesus was holding me fast, like pushed me more into the truth of like digging in and, and owning this. And so I think don't be afraid of those questions. And I think, you know, for parents specifically, as you are evangelizing your children in your home, like don't be afraid of their questions. Oh, and, yeah. you know, and, and don't be afraid to say, you know what? That's a great question. And I don't even know how to really explain it. Let's let's listen to Boggy talk. <laughs> they explain everything perfectly well. Yeah, right. we, we always have all of our questions answered, yeah. but let's search out the answers. And I but, think it's the same with your your coworker, your neighbor, like whoever it is, like it's okay, like to say, like, I don't know. Uh, and then see, sorry, I just that that's the beauty of the church. Like so then you don't know, you come to one of your, your life group leader, you come to one of your pastors, and because I've been involved in this conversation several times with several mm -hmm. people, like I'm going to have resources or, or things for you to think about or know people in our church who, who are experienced in mm -hmm. that area. And so like, then we help equip you, right? The, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers are for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Mm -hmm. So like, rather than you bringing that friend to hear me talk about why they should believe in Jesus. Like we're here to help you have that conversation because they know your heart. Mm -hmm. They don't know the random dude's heart, you know? Right. So I'm not saying God doesn't use the pastor. I mean, he does certainly he has since the beginning of time. So mm -hmm. people who think that the gospel shouldn't be proclaimed to the non-believer in right. the worship gathering is not what I'm saying. Right. Um, and they're divorcing themselves from all of church history and what the Bible <laughs> taught. But you know, I, I, I just, sorry, I interrupted you there, but it's like, you go and find out these answers and get tools yeah. and and learn together, learn. right? Like, yeah, like, you'll be surprised. You might learn some stuff. Yeah, yeah. and I think there's so much out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. Like, let people talk, right? right? Yeah. And you'll hear what they think. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I th also I think a principle in this is just don't assume people, one, don't assume people know the gospel. Oh, yeah. And two, don't assume that people are too far gone that God can't redeem them. Because I think we assume the people that people know the gospel, and then we're like, oh my goodness, their life, from my perspective, looks way too messed up, and there's no way. But, I mean, with God, all things are possible, right? If he could save the rich man, you know, like, like the camel and the island needle, like, it, it, he can save anyone. And I think, mm. like, don't uh, hesitate to be around people who you, it's just, their problems are bigger than you can solve. And that's okay because, and, you know, like your problems are bigger yeah. than you can solve too. <laughs> so, and, and if Christ, if the only difference that Christ makes in your life is that you go to a church once a month, mm. like don't be surprised that no one really cares what you think about spiritual things. Yeah. I'll never ask you these questions. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and, and I, that's what I would ask you, like, do people in your neighborhood, like, know that you're a Jesus family? Like, mm. and that doesn't mean you have to have a giant cross, like, up in your front yard. <laughs> it just means, like, or I, at Christmas time, you, like, you know, 
you have Jesus standing on top of Santa in your yeah. yard or things like, like that. Like, I agree. Like, our to me, my kids' sports, you know, is a great opportunity for me as a family to be engaged with the mm-hmm. community. But, like, do these families know there's something different about me? Or do they think we are obsessed with sports just as much as they are, you know, mm-hmm. and that they, our health and wealth drives, uh, you know, it, it is revolves around that as much. Or, you know, if you're successful in your career, like, that's great. But do people know Jesus matters? Like, I just... These are all things you need to ask yourself. And it's not like this quick fix where, okay, well then I'll, I'll figure out a way to share the gospel an mm-hmm. evangelism method. Like yeah. it's a heart correction. Yeah. And I think that's why it's just easier to correct people's behavior. And so the church says, Hey, let's give people a tool to share the gospel mm-hmm. rather than let's help pe- people treasure Jesus. Right. And you know, John Piper says worship exists, excuse me, missions exist because worship does not like ultimately the reason that Christians should be motivated to share the gospel is that people aren't treasuring Christ right. and God deserves more glory and they're created for better than the life they're living for. Absolutely. And, and you, and you care about people, you know, like scripture tells us, we don't see anybody according to the eyes of the flesh. Like I think of someone, a former uh, student that was in our life group and who's now married and children, uh, and for a while worked at Lowe's. And I, I really don't know that there was a single employee at Lowe's at that store that she didn't share their gospel with. Because she just took the time to actually get to know people as, and she saw it not just as a job that was earning some extra money. She saw it as, this is my mission. This is where I am. And these are the people I'm around. And literally like people would come to her with all kinds of questions or, and and she was so authentic. Mm -hmm. She genuinely cared. Her answers weren't just pet answers. You know, like she was, she sincerely cared and people knew that. And I think that's the kind of attitude we should have. Like we should be known as people who care about people. I think. (laughs) And and, and share and who, but she also was willing to like lay aside what people, the the fear of being rejected, the fear of what this person is going to think about me, put herself out and just say, you know what? Greater is he that's in me than he's in the world. Like I'm going to share the gospel and trust, trust Jesus, you know? Yeah. And if they think I'm weird, they already probably do uh, because I don't do some of the things that they do. Mm-hmm. And so they already know, like, I don't do that, uh, you know, fill in the blank. Uh, and I just admire that. And I just say that that's what we all should strive to be like in our coming and our going, in our sports teams, in our neighborhoods, in our jobs, we're in our schools, wherever we are, that we would just be known as people that people can come to. Yeah. So just some advice as we wrap up. So one thing I would say is just have one to three people who you're like, you know what? I'm going to pray for them every day mm. and I'm going to s- try to invest, spend time with them. Yeah. And it might, you know, so I, I've had three and in three years uh, since I've been in Niceville, one is uh, getting baptized here in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, but, um, also, there's two others, and uh, God's moving one. He's softening his heart. The other, we're not anywhere near <laughs> any. And maybe we're further away, honestly, you know, from that. We're still friends, and right. we still talk. Uh, so that I would say that some of you are these persons of peace the Bible talks about. Yeah. People have asked me, like, at my previous church and this church, like, what has led to growth uh, in those churches? And I truly would say that it's typically— a person gets on fire, starts inviting friends yeah, and it's a cycle. And you just see cycles of that, mm-hmm. you know, and God uses those people. And so yep. if that's you, like leverage that, be aware of that and, and leverage that. And then here, I would also say this. So back to the whole, the church, like it's not the church's job to reach non-believers. However, the church should be an environment that is, that is friendly towards non-believers. So I don't think that means we have to make everything look like the world in the church. Right. You know, I, I also don't think we should intentionally not look like the world in the church, but <laughs> but it does mean like, hey, do would would my friend feel welcomed and valued here? Mm-hmm. And would there be weird things that they find weird? Not the Bible, like yeah. th- that's fine. They don't find all the Bible or singing they to understand. God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, and then also, and I think this is the biggest one. And and listen to this life groups. Like, how would they feel if they came to our life group? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. Would they feel loved and welcomed and would they feel like, and and I just mean this, like, I do think life groups have to be aware, like, hey, there's a person here who they're new at this. Like, we can't talk the same, right? right? Like, mm-hmm. like, it doesn't mean we can't dive into the word, right. but like, we can't, mm-hmm. we have to be mindful of that. Just like right. if children are around in our house, like mm-hmm. if, if guests are at our house, like we have to think like that yeah. because mm-hmm. it matters. Hosp- 
Hospitality, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And it, that's a great point. Like in the life group, level. I'm done. So you, uh, wrap it all up. right, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up with this. I think yeah. it's a great point in the life group level because, like, we don't want to assume people don't assume it. So I think sometimes that comes across as like, well, we all know the story of this. And it's like, there's probably someone in there who doesn't. Right. And so I, if we're doing that, I'm saying, hey, let's We all know back. what Jehoshaphat <laughs> did. It's like, <laughs> like huh? actually, what? I, all the no. Christians are pretending like they knew. It. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. And then they're thankful that you explain it because, or you didn't, well, you tell us what it right. meant. Yeah. Like, uh, people do that to you as a pastor all the time. And he's like, okay, oh yeah, I'm like, yeah, I know, actually, right, like right. oh gosh, we're in this story. Yeah. There's a lot of stories in the I Bible. Know, right, yeah. Um, who was Paul again? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, but also, I think in life groups, and one of the things we we encourage our life group leaders to do is to lead our groups to talk about who are we sharing our faith with, and you know, like so in our if if in our life groups, you know, one of the things we're doing in our life group right now is we're taking the a good you know. 25 to 30 minutes of our time and breaking our big life group down into small little groups, men and women. And that's where we're sharing, like, you know, praying for each other, you know, struggles, wins, but also who are we sharing our faith with and who are we praying for? And I think that's a great, keeps it on the radar for everyone. And it's accountability because this is what we want to do. I think that's, you know, we all need that. All yeah. of us need that mm. accountability. So I would mm. just encourage um, our life groups. I, I jokingly said, it's like if, if life group leaders, if you ever want, if your group's ever talking, you can't get their attention, just be like, all right, guys, hey, we're going to go around and, and share who we're sharing our faith with. And then it will probably be pretty quiet. And that's a joke, but also kind of sad because it's a lot true. You're not for mm. everyone because we do have, I think of a number of people in our church who are faithfully sharing their faith with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but... I guess the qu question we have to say is, as believers, are we even looking for the right. opportunities? Mm -hmm. And and do we prioritize this with our time? Do we say, like, I'm going to leave time open in my schedule for this. I'm going to make time for this. I'm going to prioritize time with people, a time sharing the gospel, yeah. time making disciples. And, so, I, and I said I was done, but... Uh, you're never done. But the worship, grow, give, serve part, we're mm. all going to do in heaven mm. better than we do now. Mm. The reason we're still on earth is the reach. The reach, yeah. If if God, mm. it was just about you being still with Jesus, singing that horrible elevation song, like <laughs> which you won't sing in heaven, but me, he would just me, me. he would take you up the minute you profess faith. Yeah, but he leaves you here on earth. Yep, to be an ambassador yeah. for the kingdom of God. So yeah. the reason you're here still breathing Christian he's still here, he's not done. is to share the gospel with people. Yeah. That doesn't have to look like I go out and share the Bible, but it means I am constantly trying to get to the point where people see who Jesus is yeah. that are in my life. Yeah. And so question is, how are we doing that? Yeah. So, uh, man, that's good. I think that's good stuff. And I think I, so too. I'm glad we didn't have a guest because we didn't have time for it. <laughs> that's right. So, hey, uh, next week we're wrapping up inside the church and we want your questions. If you've got questions uh, for uh, for us, we want to know. Uh, talking about worship, grow, serve, give, reach. You can ask anything and we want your questions. We don't want to just have to come up with our own questions and then pretend that you asked them, which we will do. Why do so many pastors have wives names Christy? Yeah. And why do they all spell them differently? Yes. But <laughs> so, Christ is in most of yeah, them. They, and, and Christ is. Yes. yes. Uh, so <laughs> at least both of our wives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, we want to answer the questions as best no we can. No pagan spelling of Christy in our homes. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so send those Ooh. questions to us, messages, <laughs> email, uh, drop us a message on Facebook, Facebook Did Abney email. have a belly button? Oh, that's a great one. Uh, and we'll answer it if you ask. Yep. But if you don't ask it, we're not answering it. So send us questions and tune in next time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to Boggy Talk. We are so glad you joined in the conversation. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss a beat.